Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to get a baby and a toddler to sleep in the same room. So if you think you can benefit from this video, then keep on watching. Oh, there's a cat. So real quick, I wanna say I'm having a really bad acne day and these are zip patches. So if you see something like glistening on my skin, it's a zip patch. I did not wanna put makeup on this face, you know? Like, it's this whole battle where you're like, I wanna wear the makeup, but I also don't wanna make it worse. It is, it is what it is. Okay, so what I'm gonna talk about today are about around like, I think it's about 15 tips on things that we just did and we added to their room to help get the routine going to get them to sleep in the same room. So if you're in the situation like us where Max was working from home, we had a lot of visitors, we needed a room set for that, you know, and we only have three bedrooms. We have our room, we have the kids room and then the spare room, which is the office guest room or whatever. And that's where Cal was sleeping at the beginning after he was transitioned out of our room into his own room, he was in the office at night. And that just didn't end up working out for us because Max needed to work at night a lot of times. Sometimes he just wanted to play games with his friends and uh, we had a lot of visitors and they couldn't go to sleep because Cal was in there. And if they would go to sleep, sometimes they'd wake him up and it was just this whole thing. So finally one day, Max was the one that was like, listen, we just, we gotta do it. So the reason I say this is because I was the one that was like really, really, really hesitant at first. Like I knew it was possible, but I, in the back of my head, I was like, like, there's no way, there's no way they can share him. There's no way this is gonna work. I was super scared that Scotty was going to hurt Cal. Like I just had all these things running through my head that I was like, there's no way, there's no way they can share your room. So just remind yourself that it can work and it is possible. Kids share rooms all the time. You can definitely get there. It just takes some work. So all you're gonna need is you're gonna need some knowledge. You're gonna need some education on, you know, sharing rooms and what it's like and how you can do it. And then it takes some preparation, like prepping the older kid, prepping the room, Room and then you're good to go. So what's funny is we met all these milestones and then I was the one that was like still hesitant, but Max was the one that, that was like, go for it. And when I talk about like milestones, the first thing is your kids need to both sleep through the night with no interruptions. Obviously there's gonna be those random wakes and cries and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But when I mean like your kid just sleeps through the night, he doesn't need to wake up to feed, your toddler doesn't come to you in the middle of the night, like regularly, like stuff like that. They need to be good sleepers. Otherwise, I don't think it would have worked for us. I think it would have just been harder to get your kids to sleep through the night if they're together, if they don't sleep through the night by themselves. Does that make sense? So when it comes to the preparation of the room, they need to have both of their beds as separate as you can. So we put one bed on one side of the room, another bed on the other side of the room, and then we put a dresser in the middle. So the biggest tip that I can tell you if you get from this is you need a sound machine. And so the sound machine goes in the middle between both kids and it goes closer to Cal for a reason. Because with us, Scotty's the one that wakes up in the middle of the night and has some, sometimes he'll have hard times going to sleep, sometimes he'll wake up in the middle of the night. Cal is the one that sleeps dead asleep through the entire night. For the most part, Scotty's one that has a hard time waking up. So the sound machine goes next to Cal because if Scotty's crying, Cal needs to have as much noise as he can to not wake up. So I would say that put the sound machine closest to the kid that is the better sleeper. Another thing is we got rid of the nightlight part on, so we have the hatch machine. So we had to turn off the light completely because when Scotty would wake up and kind of cry for us or go to the door before he was able to just get back in bed and go to sleep, Cal was starting to wake up and he was able to see Scotty or he was able to see us come into the room and you know sing Scotty some more songs and get him to sleep. Cal would be right there seeing us and he would wah, wah, because he like wants us because he can see us. So that was a big game changer. That I think that was the hardest part that we came across when it came to the sharing of the rooms. That might be a good thing for you to just turn off the light completely. Um, Scotty was fine. He hasn't complained once. He hasn't asked for the nightlight once, so we didn't have to worry about that. So when we first started, we basically would tell Scotty like, hey, this is happening. Brother's gonna come in your room. Oh, another thing, I just wanna add this little tidbit in there, is you need to make sure that Scott, the older child is really comfortable in their bed. And make sure you're not like taking the toddler out of his crib and then putting him in his bed and then putting the baby in the crib that the toddler just had because he could have some resentment like, hey, that's my bed. So I do wanna add that Scotty was in his big kid bed for 
for like eight months before Cal even came into the room. Make sure he really is like, this is my bed now. And he doesn't look at the crib and he's like, that's my bed. So that's just something to think about. The crib was in there for a long time. Scotty was able to see it. He knew that that was Cal's bed and he knew that his bed was his bed, if that makes sense. So make sure you establish that before you put him in the same room. And then we would take Scotty over to the bed and we'd be like, this is where brother sleeps. Look, he doesn't get a blanket. He sleeps in this little sleep sack. You sleep with a blanket and a pillow, but brother does not. And stuff like that. We'd constantly like reiterate that to him. This is where he sleeps. This is where you sleep. And just really talk to him because they understand more than you think, I promise you. But just every time you went, you go to bed, like talk about brother sleeping here too, or sister, whatever. Talk about them. And this is, this is little baby's bed. And this is your bed. And really talk to them and talk about the room and whatever. I would say like a week before you even put them together in the same room. That's what we did and it turned out great. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is super, super, super important. And for us, we believe in flexible schedules or flexible like routines. I'm not talking like strict, like this has to be like this every single day or whatever. For sure, we've been the most consistent with our bedtime routine. And that would be, they take a bath together, uh, then we put their pajamas, lotion on, we play together in loft. We'll usually kind of clean up the, you know, playroom and stuff. And then this is when they like break off. Scotty will go, so say I'm putting Cal to bed, Scotty will go with Max downstairs and they'll either like watch cartoons together, bake cookies, just do stuff together, have some quality time. And then I will read Cal some books and sing him some songs and put him to bed. And then you would wait like 30 minutes to an hour and then you would put the toddler to bed. So for us, the baby to bed first worked. I know some people that actually put the toddler to bed first because their toddler is like a super, super, super deep sleeper. So it didn't matter if they put the baby to bed later. And sometimes that happens. Like sometimes your baby's going to bed at nine and your toddler's going to bed at seven. So again, whatever works for you, what worked for us was put the baby to bed first. And then we put Scotty to bed um, 30 minutes to an hour afterwards. But Cal always goes to bed at seven. Scotty will go to bed at 8, 8.30. At the beginning, we were putting him, we would put Cal to bed at seven, we put Scotty to bed at 7.30, and they actually didn't have a problem for like the first two weeks. I would say even like the first month now that I think about it. But what really started to happen is Scotty hit his, what would you call it? Scotty hit his like big feelings moment in his life and he's definitely changed a lot since we first started this and he's grown up like something switched. He started to notice, hey, mom and dad are gone, blah, blah, blah. This was like a month after we've been doing it. Cause when we first started, I was like, dang Max, why didn't we do this forever ago? And he's like, I know, I know. So what he would do is this happened for like a week. He would, we would put him to bed and he would get up and cry and run after us. And he would like bang on the door. And this is when we still had the nightlight on. And so Cal would wake up and we were like, oh crap. And so what I would have to go in or Max would have to go in and we would just like rub Scotty's back, get him back to sleep. And then Cal would like, but then he would like start to cry. And then he would like have to, he would like, self-soothe and put himself back to sleep. And then we would have to like sneak out of there like a little gremlin. That kind of like leads me into the next thing I want to talk about is you're going to have setbacks and you're going to have bad days and your kids are going to go through leaps and they're just going to, you know, like Scotty, he just went through something. He's getting older and realized like, hey, we're actually gone. So that like week was hard, but then it just like jumps back to normal and it's totally fine. So when you do have those setbacks and when you do have those leaps or like your baby's getting teeth or something, um, that's super normal. Like they're gonna have those setbacks when they're separate in their rooms anyways. And now it's just the new normal. So when they're going through these phases in their time where it's a little harder, once it, they've been in the same room for so long, it's just like not a big deal anymore. And we've been noticing that with Scotty and Cal, like Scotty was going through this time where he would always get in the bed with Cal and he was super excited to hang with them. And he's like, hey, I've got a buddy cause Cal's getting older and they would wrestle and play together. And he, I think he just wanted to like snuggle and sleep with someone. But then and like once that kind of passed, like I guess the excitement of it for Scotty just passed, then he just stopped and he hasn't done it for like a month. So again, there's just gonna be these little things, these little bumps in the road, but once you get past them, I'm telling you right now, it is smooth sailing and it is so worth it. And 
I'm so glad that Max just was like, hey, we're gonna do this, let's bite the bullet because it has been so amazing to have more space in our house where we can go hang out like at night and we can have a guest room and Max can be able to work at night and stuff like that. It's just been so helpful. So we do not, do not regret putting them in the same room in the slightest. It is the best thing we've ever done and I'm so glad we did it and I wish we would have done it sooner. Um, I do wanna add a little tip on that though because in the beginning, if you're having a super long night and we've done this about two or three times where they're just not going to sleep they're just having a really really bad night and they're just keeping each other up or something i don't know i can't even remember what happened it's been so long but you need to be able to have some sort of backup plan in case you do have those like hard nights where you're like okay it is this late at night i'm tired the kids are tired this just isn't gonna work tonight so let's have the backup plan let you have the pack and play in the office or in here i don't know just whatever you want to do have a backup plan have somewhere that and i would move baby that's another thing is move baby because baby is able to adapt better than toddler is and at least that's it how it is for us i don't want to say that's 100 but that's usually i would say how it goes is you would separate baby and keep toddler in a place in his room in a place where he really recognizes because he knows what's going on more than baby does the last thing i'm going to talk about is naps they still take a nap separately so cal will take a nap at 9 30 by himself and then they'll take a nap together at 1 30 so maybe there's a way to do it i'm sure there is but they still take naps separately um, another reason is because I don't like it because when I have been able to get them to sleep in the same room during nap time Cal still wakes up like an hour before Scotty and so I mean if I can only have one kid asleep I'm gonna take it but rather than two kids right so I'd have to like run up there and grab Cal without waking up Scotty and it was just whole thing so they are separate for naps it's really easy it's not a big deal we just have the pack and play we either put it here in our room or we put it in the office just like depending on if Max is working from home from now it's kind of a hassle to move it up and down but whatever it is what it is and you just make do okay I think that's it for this video I talked about all I wanted to talk about those are the tips that really helped us and we're able to make it a smooth transition for putting them in the same room if you got anything helpful from this video then comment below and tell me what it was I love to know if I'm helping anyone out there and if I'm helping them you know make their life a little bit easier can you tell I just got my hair done I can't stop touching it Oh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want more videos like this, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys. I promise you there's going to be times where it's like 1 a.m. and you're like, is this worth it? And the answer is yes, it is worth it. I promise you.